Pastors have one of the most important jobs in the world. They spiritually lead and care for a community. One way of easily remembering this at Foothills Church is we commit our lives to the vision of helping people find and follow Jesus. For the last 24 years in Oconee County, whether you're a part of Foothills now, you've been a part of Foothills in the past, or you're a part of the faithful crew that has helped build this all along, we all know that God has clearly used an anointed, gifted, and humble leader in Pastor Greg Orham and his family to invest their lives into the lives of this community. Pastors like Greg are the type of individual that could never be replaced, but the truth about every pastor and leader is that they're in a time of transition. There's a time for them to lead, and there's a time for them to hand the baton off to the next generation to lead. Even Jesus had a three-year plan to pour into his disciples and trust them to lead after his assignment was complete on earth. We recently learned from Pastor Greg that his time to hand the baton over has been made clear to him. In addition to that, we know who God has entrusted to lead the next generation, and that is Pastor Kevin Robinson. So today we're going to have a behind the scenes conversation to take an exclusive look at how we got to such a significant moment in the history of Foothills Church. Thank you so much for sitting down and sharing your journey with us. I'm sure this is a podcast that people are going to be listening to for many years to come. But Greg, I wanted to start with you today. Okay. Um, when did you start sensing that this transition was coming? Um, I, I don't know that I could put a specific date on it. I think it's more of a uh, continual sensing that kind of increased over time, probably in the last few years. I mean, I knew it was coming. I, I think we all realize that at some point there needs to be a succession plan uh, and there needs to be a new leader at some point. Just never know exactly when that is. And so over the la- as I you know, started looking at the future of Foothills and started thinking what would be in the best interest for this church, um, you know, that took my, kind of my mind on that journey. And then I started meeting with some of our leadership staff and just talking that through and and just trying to be wise about it. So it's been a few years in the making, knowing knowing that the day would come eventually. You're a healthy guy. You're a fit guy. You've got a lot of life left in you. Why, why now? Because you could go on for another 10 <laughs> years, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that is a good question. I had a conversation with kind of a, a, a mentor kind of guy in my life who who does a lot of succession planning with churches all over the country. And, and uh, he had actually asked me some time back, he said, so you know, what are, what are your plans? And I said, no, nah, I feel same, basically what you said. I feel good. I uh, feel like I'm just hitting my prime. feel like I got a lot of time ahead of me. But um, he said, well, what's the best for the church? And that really, I think, caused me to think a little deeper into that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not for health reasons or anything like that. I just think when you look at a church and you look at um, when you look at the overall longevity of the church, the, the person, maybe the founder or whatever, there's a time when you just start looking at it and saying, okay, um, at some point, uh, the reality is new leadership needs to come in with new vision, new exciting ideas. And, uh, and, and actually, again, I had to set myself aside, my, my own personal interest, and say, what's in the best interest of the church long term? And, uh, and so that's, that's kind of how you arrive at that. And that's, you know, you have to wrestle inside your soul a little bit for those things. When did you begin to sense that maybe Kevin was, was the person for the job and, and how did that process work? What did that look like? Well, I actually knew it a lot longer, uh, much longer than Kevin knew it, <laughs> but you know, Kevin was on our staff years ago and I knew then I said, God's hand is on that guy. And he was very young at that time. And then when he transitioned and moved back to Nashville, it was kind of like, well, I was disappointed. And then we had a conversation. I don't even know if, I guess he probably remembers. We had a conversation when I was started thinking about succession some years back. And one, I knew that it wasn't like a, just an overnight thing, that there needed to be a, a seamless transition. And that meant that it would have to take, you know, years, really. So reached out to Kevin talked to him about the possibility. And he, was, he wasn't interested at that time. He's like, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Appreciate you thinking about me, but he wasn't really ready. And then, um, 
And but I but I kind of in the back of my mind was like, Kevin would be the right guy. Mm-hmm. And just I think God just laid him on my heart. And um, you know, just was hoping that God would turn his heart toward that. And then um, and I, I'm probably getting ahead of where you want to go in the story, but then some time passed. It was actually probably another couple of years, yeah. I would imagine. And um, and then kind of arrived at where we are, and I'm sure we'll get to that part of the story. Yeah. So, Kevin, a lot of people know that you served at Foothills when you yeah. were younger, but for the people that haven't listened and don't don't know that story, you care to expand yeah. on that a little bit? Sure, yeah. So uh, it was 2011 that I moved to, to Tacoa. We had a campus over there and was, was a worship pastor. And um, honestly, I was just thinking while you were talking, I don't think that my trajectory in ministry – would have evolved beyond specifically music or worship if it had not been for Pastor Greg continuing to stretch me throughout throughout uh, my journey. There was when I was 23, they asked me to become the campus pastor over there, and that was something I never had my sights on or my mind on. I had my head down and was was happy doing music, and would have been happy doing music uh, forever. But um, they helped me see that maybe maybe God had some other giftings that. Um, that could help his kingdom. And they stretched me as a leader to take some leaps into some of those, you know, positions and, and with, with Katie, obviously, um, meeting her in Tacoa, she's, she's been like the, the perfect wife for every position that I've, I've had, but especially when we became, you know, campus pastors there in Tacoa, it, it was, it was awesome. So, um, the way I kind of describe it is I, I kind of, uh, like God, God needed us to go to Nashville. I had some friends there that God had, like some of them were moving to Tacoa and we, we had some influence that we could have while we were still young, not too far from, um, you know, after high school as some of my friends were walking away from the Lord. So there was purpose in it, but there was also in the back of my mind and heart, this kind of fear of what the trajectory might be headed towards and would I miss music? And uh, I think that journey in Nashville um, helped solidify a lot of things as far as um, dying off, you know, am I chasing things for what I think I want or what um, what God would have Katie and I surrender our lives to? And so, the, I mean, it was, I think we'd only been in Nashville a year and a half when we had that first conversation. And I do, I remember that conversation very well because it was the first time I'd ever even considered a thought of a position like this. It was nothing, when I say it was never on my radar, this was never on my radar. And um, so what was that conversation? So I had come into town uh, to, um, I, I think I poured into the staff this, this specific trip. I think it was a, a Monday staff meeting and I just shared some lessons that I was learning from the organization I was serving at. And Greg and I, uh, we, we, we hung out a little bit in your office and you asked me about the future. And we, we had some transitional stuff going on at the church I was at in Nashville. It was a time for us to be uh, reflective and see what God was doing. So it was a good time for a conversation. Um, but it was something that, I mean, Katie and I, we we spent months praying over that at that point and came in, had conversations further and just, we didn't feel like our assignment in Nashville was up. And looking back, I can see where there was a lot of just personal maturity that I needed to to grow in, in, in my relationship with Jesus and my relationship with Katie. Um, like I can see that the, the bigger theme in the story now of why it wasn't then, but then that was one of the hardest no's that I, I ever had uh, because um, we, we, we loved, like, like I said, Pastor Greg is a person who has believed in us. Well, I, I would sit with other bosses. If, if Pastor Greg ever called, he, he's like, he gets the interruption of all interruptions. Didn't matter where I was. If I see his name, it's like, sorry, I got to go. <laughs> Pastor Greg's calling. And so um, that was a hard no at that time. But wow, I can't believe we're here right now. That's <laughs> crazy. When, when he told you no, what, what was going through your mind at that process? I said he needed to get saved because... <laughs> <laughs> no, he, uh, I, I respected that because one of the things... And looking back, you're right. In hindsight, mm-hmm. I see what what he learned the organization with the church he was at uh was a lot farther down the 
Lyman, a much larger church than Foothills. He learned so much, became a better leader. Kevin's uh, one of the things that I noticed about Kevin, even at a young age, is that he was much more mature beyond his years, and he had a lot of wisdom, and he was humble, as you can tell, just by his conversation. And the kind of traits that you look for in a leader, at least I, somebody who I felt like should succeed me, I wanted those kind of traits. I wasn't, we weren't looking for somebody that was, you know necessarily flashy and all those things that a lot of people look for. I, I want it, I want it, not, not that you're not flashy, but <laughs> not, a little flashy. No, no, I, I wanted somebody yeah. though that had substance, somebody that I really felt would, um, you know, be able to lead at a level and with character and integrity. And that was real important to me. So, um, I kind of knew in the back of my mind, I said, boy, that I just feel like that. And, and our leadership agreed because everybody loved Kevin and Katie. And so, um, so we just kept praying. And, and um, at that point, almost in my mind, I was like, okay, I'll put this on hold somewhat and just keep the radar up. If there's somebody that comes in that I feel I could do that. But in the back of my mind, I just kind of was, that, that was always there. And, uh, and as it got closer and then, you know, circumstances worked out, because you asked a minute ago, you know, you know, you still got a lot of years and that kind of stuff. And, 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 and I do, I, I mean, I'm not, this isn't, as you're going to hear, this right. isn't like tomorrow. Right. But, um, but I didn't want to be like, the, you know, that, you know, the, the athlete who overstays when he should have retired, he didn't, he just stayed in there too long and, and kind of, kind of hurt his legacy a little bit or whatever. And, and I, and I'm not going to be like the Tom Brady who's going to retire and come back and retire and come back. It's kind of like, okay, once the, the mantle of leadership is handed over to Kevin, he's, he's the guy. But, um, but I'm really super excited about this because I really feel like, um, when, and I think the congregation who is, you know, maybe haven't, haven't known Kevin as long as I have is, um, is they're going to discover the same things that I've discovered that God's hands on him. And he's got a he's got an anointing from God, and is uh, he's got vision and a lot of wisdom and all those things that I think will take us to the next level. Not just maintain where we are, but take us into the next into our future at another level. And I I'm really uh, in, just excited and want to support him in that. So so Kevin, you obviously ended up back at Foothills. So what yeah. what did that process look like that brought you back here? Yeah. So I think our our initial conversation was at the end of 2016 going into early 2017. And, you know, we, we, we said no then, but if I look back at our life from 2017 to specifically like 2020, it was almost a blur. There was so much that occurred in our life during that time. We became parents. We, you know, we had Haley, uh, in 2018, the church that we were leading grew and outgrew the facility we were in. So we had to go through a, a whole campaign to get a new facility, renovate that. Our organization went through a, a uh, lead pastor transition and that was a wild thing to lead through. And um, even just in our personal life, there was so much going on that we were we were running at a pace that we didn't have time to really think a lot about how we got here or what was, we were just kind of you know, nose down, what's, what's in front of us, keep running. There were, there were a few times though that Katie and I would be removed from the crazy pace and we'd just be sitting down having conversations and whether it was her or me, it'd be different at different times. But one of us might, would just say, did we like, did we get it wrong? Did we miss God on this? Are we supposed to consider foothills still? Is that something that we should still be praying about. Do you think that that may be the long term, what God has? And it was never a reason for us to think about this because everything in our life in Nashville would point towards um, like a, a, a positive direction, success, God's favor. He had His hand on our life, and things were great. There was never any reason to think about. I mean, we were we were. The house we had bought was two miles from my parents. I had siblings all around. Haley's cousins are all right there. Um, Yet there was always this question in the back of our minds. Well, I specifically, uh, I found this recently and for, forgot about this, honestly, but in February of 2020, I had had a time with the Lord, or I had a dream. And in my time with the Lord, the next morning, I wrote down in my journal, and this is what, I'll just read part of it. It said, Lord, I had a dream last night on my visit uh, to Foothills. Pastor Greg called me into his office, and um, he said they haven't moved forward yet with the future. 
And um, I, I had some like personal stuff in there, but then it says, Lord, uh, what happened in my heart is the greatest indicator. Instead of fear because I don't preach often or instead of dreaming about logistics, instead of worrying about our current place, my heart jumped. My desire was yes. My desire was to tell Katie yes. And even now, Lord, I long to be asked. I'm a different man today. Lord, I believe you're helping me want it. So I have some specific asks. I, I asked that God would um, bring the ask again because I wanted the pressure to be on him moving, not me making something happen. Or I asked that he would make it clear that if I'm supposed to say something, I would feel confident that he wants me to do that. And then I asked that he would tell Katie, and I specifically said maybe it would be a dream. That's like written in here. And the next month, life went crazy all over again. It was 2020. We had a tornado that blazed through Nashville, similar to what happened here in Seneca. And I I remember for a week and a half straight, our life was nonstop helping any way we could. I just remember being physically exhausted. Then the world shut down with COVID. This was like that initial two week stop the spread that took place. And so even how we did church changed immediately. And in this moment, I had some personal stuff going on with my family. And I reached out to Brian Marshall, Pastor Brian, who is someone in my life I'm always able to turn to when I've got something going on. He's just, he's a prayer warrior. He's wealth of wisdom. He loves Katie and I so well. And um, I needed like, I needed a retreat. (laughs) So I came down, I stayed with a buddy in Tacoa. I sat down with Pastor Brian during that time. And while we were sitting down, Pastor Brian was like, Kevin, you're still the guy. You're supposed to you're you're supposed to talk to Greg and make this happen. And I was like, I'm not talking to Greg. If Greg still wants this, you're gonna have to tell him that he needs to talk to me. But my biggest fear with all of this is that I would have lobbied to make any of it happen or that it'd be my plan, because my plans have never worked. The only plans I've ever seen have favor from God or blessing from God is when I said yes to his plan. And I wanted all along to know that this was his plan. And um, so went back to Nashville that summer. There were, there was an opening for the worship position here. Worship is, we've talked about that. It's my background. That was something I'm passionate about. Well, that summer while church was looking different, I started to get the itch of wondering, am I supposed to get involved in worship again? And then this opened and I just, I reached out to pastor Greg asking how I could pray for them in the, in this time. And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe I'm supposed to see if, if this is what God might be doing. So I asked him if, if we could talk about the worship role. And um, we set up a time for me to come in town. Right before I come in town, I got offered a promotion at Crosspoint where I was at, which made things really confusing. Um, and then when we came, we, we, had, we had determined we probably wouldn't, come that 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 promotion just kind of the timing of it seemed like we were supposed to stay when we came in august and katie and i were here god made it so clear he gave us vision and passion for this community that was undeniable we knew right then that we were called to come help people find and follow jesus here and at that moment i didn't care if it was leading worship or cleaning toilets i didn't, the, the role didn't matter and to katie it was the same we, we were silent for an hour of the car ride back because neither one of us wanted to start sharing what was going on. And the next day I, I called Pastor Greg and said, um, I think God wants us to come. I, I asked him for advice. I said, I need you to give me unbiased advice. <laughs> unbiased. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But at that point, like we didn't know about the future. We just knew that the first assignment was just start helping people find and follow Jesus. We didn't, we didn't, None of the rest of this was clear yet. So you came in as a worship pastor here at Foothills for either of you. Was that the plan all along to come in as a worship pastor and then end up leading as the new pastor of Foothills Seneca? You know, I don't really think it was at that time. I mean, in the back of my mind, I guess I'd hope that would be the case. But that really, when uh, when, when Kevin came on as a worship, that was kind of our focus. And, you know, like I say, I was hoping that somehow that, could turn into that, but I wasn't going to force it either. It just was, we, you know, it was always been we trying to, and I think Kevin said this a second ago, we just, we didn't want to 
either on either end of us wanted yeah. to, to, to manipulate the situation, wanted to be God led. And uh and I think it just over time it became apparent and uh here we are now, and I'm super excited about that. But no, it wasn't. It, that, that was to come and lead worship, which he does wonderfully as well. So yeah, I I remember like we knew that the need immediately was worship. What the future held, because of previous conversations, we had insight that there was a day that there would be new leadership um, at, at Foothills, and so the only thing Katie and I had clarity on is that we were supposed to be a part of helping that. So if that meant leading worship and helping figure out what that looks like five years from now, because I, I, again, like you said, Pastor Greg is still running in his prime, I think. So when or how this happened didn't matter, and who didn't matter very much. We just knew that Foothills matters. This vision matters and it matters right now and it matters in the future and so we were we were committed to that but again the the the, the role we i didn't i mean we didn't i didn't preach right away i didn't even know when or how that would happen and i didn't i didn't ask i i didn't like lobby for that so yeah so you spoke of vision i want to ask you pastor greg what excites you most about the vision of foothills moving forward it's almost our 24th anniversary, basically it's 24th anniversary. And uh, over those 24 years, we've that has been our heartbeat to help people find and follow Jesus. And what gets me excited about it is I think that with Kevin and, uh, you know, that fresh vision and excitement, not to change that part of it, our mission, our values, all those things are the same. The DNA of who Foothills is the same he and Katie carry that just like Liz and I do. And so it, it excites me because um, every pastor, no matter who they are, is is an interim at some level, right? They're a temporary guy because either they're going to move on, they're going to die, they're going right. to retire. They're gonna, Nobody's there forever. And so in my mind, the best time to do that is when you're at your prime, when you're feeling good and, and, and you know, that Instead of people wondering, when's that guy going to leave? You know, that that's the last, you don't want to be at that guy. And I didn't want to be that guy. Plus, um, I really felt like it was time. I mean, when we started this Foothills, I was, I think our first service, I was um, almost 38 years old. And, um, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's getting near time, you know. And I'm not that, we're, like I said, this is not overnight. We're going to, it's going to be a slow transition, but... And, uh, and Liz and I aren't going anywhere, anything like that. We're just excited about the future. Uh, I, I think, you know, w- when we started, I was in my 30s. Now I'm in my early 60s. And I like to think I still can communicate to, you know, a broad audience. But the fact of the matter is that, that we've got a lot of younger people coming in. And, and um, you know, I think a younger voice needs to be heard as well because, um, you know, we don't want to lose an entire generation. And um, so I think in the, in the best interest of the church, for the health of the church, for the future of the church, these kind of things are necessary. And uh, I, I think we are at that point and so excited about what that means. That's awesome. And you, Kevin, mm-hmm. speaking of vision for the future, what, what's your vision for Foothills Church? The same. <laughs> I mean, that would be... Katie and I came here to help people find and follow Jesus. I've shared uh, before, but Katie rededicated her life to Jesus and got real with Jesus because of that vision to help people find and follow Jesus. Our life calling is to continue that, to continue that journey in Oconee County. And uh, and I'm excited about the vision that we've got to go beyond this county. God has um, resourced us as we're getting ready to launch you know, a campus at Foothills East. And we, we hope to do more of that and plan to do more of that as God you know, throws favor and resources there. But it's the same vision. It's just, it's just continuing to push the ball further down the field. We believe that we get to, like Katie and I, we get to stand on the shoulders of giants who've gone before us that have set, set us up to continue reaching more people. And one of the things I'm really excited about is that uh, Pastor Greg is still going to be, like we're going to lead together, 
right now. I'm excited about this year of, of co-leading and beyond that. I'm excited that while he's talking about maybe I'm bringing something younger to the table preaching, we're not done hearing from Pastor Greg. He's going to preach often and uh, continue to be a voice for this community and for this church. And um, so I'm excited. That's a rare that's a rare setup. Not every church that goes through a transition has this, and I'm grateful for our relationship and the fact that we can we can lead in that way. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, and I think I think there are always those questions that people are probably watching mm-hmm. this are wondering about that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so the plan is that for the next year, that Kevin and I will be co-pastors. That'll be you know. Um, our titles. Now he'll still uh, have some of certain responsibilities with worship that he'll be doing, but mm-hmm. limited. And um, and he's been already over the last year, kind of in an unofficial capacity, leading a lot of what staff and later doing serving on the senior management team, things like that. Um, and so for the next year, there'll be kind of a co-pastorate. Then the following year, on our 25th anniversary, and that's really was in my mind that was a milestone that I you know, I felt like was the right time to hand a baton. A, a year from now, the plan is on our 25th anniversary that Kevin, then our titles would change a little bit more. He would become the lead pastor and my title would be founding pastor. And he would, you know, be leading the church and I'd be serving with him and underneath his leadership and uh, still still be preaching. Um, but he would take the the bulk of that and then beyond that, um, you know, that for that following that next year after that, uh, and by the way, during that time, I'll still be serving on senior management team and leadership. But beyond there, um, you know, at that point, uh, you know, I'm going to, whatever Kevin needs me to do, I'm really excited about our new expansion for other campuses and things like that. So, um, and some preaching and, you know, other things like that, whatever he needs me to do, that's basically is my uh, mindset on that, but super excited about that. It's awesome, guys. We're excited too. So I'm sure everyone's curious, Pastor Craig. What what's next for you? Well, for us, uh, Liz and I are, you know, I mean, nothing's really going to change much. We, uh, you know, if I guess I look down the future, at some point, uh, you know, we're this is our home. This is this this is our family, church family. Our family's here. Um, you know, we're part of this community, and we're not going anywhere. But we, uh, you know, our responsibilities will change a little bit. And I know that I'm hoping to have um, Liz and Katie and we'll do this follow up. Mm-hmm. I'd like for everybody to hear their hearts on this because, you know, Liz is without Liz, Foothills doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, she has just poured her heart and soul yeah. uh, into this. And so, you know, and she loves leading children's ministries, but, you know, and she'll continue to do that as long as needed. So, it's not like we're riding off into the sunset, you know, we're, we're, we feel like God's still going to use us and do those kind of things. But, but there comes a time when, um, you know, the, the wise thing, again, the, what's in the best interest of the church is that you, you look ahead because when we started the church, I never wanted this church built on me or my personality or dependent on me. And so, because I always felt like the best sign of leadership is how things run when you're not there. Mm-hmm. And I feel really comfortable that after, you know, we'll have been 25 years at that point of our heart and soul and, uh, you know, our, our, our lives invested here, that that will continue with Kevin and Katie. And I, and I know it will. And that's why I'm so confident about this and excited about this. Um, nobody asked me to leave. In fact, I've had people say, well, why, you know, you got plenty of time. But I, but I just you know I just sometimes just say okay this is what um, this is the right thing to do, and it, that always doesn't directly maybe benefit you, but it's the right thing to do for the kingdom, and that's that's really the heartbeat behind it. So um, I am I'm pumped about it, and uh, and I I'm not you know transition is is uh, can be difficult, but I think taking the pro- approach we're doing where it's going to be. Like I said, Kevin's been doing kind of some things for the last year, but then a, a full year of side by side doing ministry together, he can learn some things. Hopefully, that yeah. you know that uh, to do, maybe not to do that I've I've learned over the years, and then and then I get to serve underneath him and uh, and cheerlead for him, 
and support his leadership as well. So that, that that's, and other than that, I, I still, of course, I have my pastor fit, um, which is a uh, personal training that I do with pastors uh, all over the country. And so I'm going to do more of that. So I'll keep investing in a, into uh, pastors and their health. So yeah, excited. So in closing, is there anything that either of you would like to share? I think uh, I think what I would just say is our goal is to be as transparent as possible. We want to just there's this has been a really cool God story, and we covered as much as we could remember today. But I'm I'm sure there's even details we, we um, that small details that'll be fun that we'll remember later. And um, what we want people to know is we're not afraid to share any part of this story. And if you, there's questions that we have not answered that people have, we'd love to be able to address that. So we're, we'd like to invite people to go email us at questions at foothills.cc. And if there are specific questions that keep popping up, we'll either respond or we might come back on here and do another podcast and and address some of those things because we want everyone to have confidence that um, that this has been the Lord's plan and that we, uh, that, that we, like we value Foothills and and what what people are wanting to know about this yeah because anytime there's change i think the first question uh that people ask is how does that affect me right right so yeah. i know there are people that are probably wondering is there going to be like some noticeable change is kevin mm-hmm. get up there and just turn turn everything upside right. down no, that's not that you know this that, that's not how we're this is going to no. be it's going to be like hopefully seamless yeah and we I think the one thing I was trying to communicate as we were doing this is I started thinking if I was hearing this news and I was part of the Foothills family and I was trying to process that, what questions would I have? What, Mm -hmm. you know, and we've tried to answer those, but I'm like Kevin said, there's probably things we didn't think about. So if anybody's got questions, we're open books. I mean, this, there is no, there's no No. backstory. There's nothing. This is just like an exciting time in the history of our church that I believe, and I really believe this, that um, that God is going to use Kevin and Katie and so many others to go beyond where we've ever seen, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, during the first 25 years of our history under his leadership. So it's, you know, in Scripture, you see a lot of transitions. You know, Moses handed the baton to Joshua, mm-hmm. and uh, Elijah handed it to Elisha. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's mm-hmm. a normal process. It's a good process. It's, a, it's, a, it's the right thing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be hopefully what our hope is that this will be so well done, the way that we transition that other churches will come and say, can you help us? Mm. Because we're trying to navigate those waters because it's it's tricky. Let's face it. You know, you're, you're talking about a founding pastor has been, you know, 20 plus years in any organization. You know, there's a lot of whether I want it to or not, a lot of who I am is tied up into the personality of the church. And we want this to be like an example to other churches of how this is done in a, in yeah. a you know, just God honoring way, spirit led all the way. Yeah. And, um, and I'm, you know, really, we are open. So anybody's got yeah. questions, you know, let us know. Um, well, I, w- I would say even like another thing that, that isn't normal about this is, God has positioned us to chase things right now. Like we haven't been waiting to do this and then chase what God's got. The visions always help people find and follow Jesus. So we are still going to pursue launching a campus. We are pursuing Foothills Espanol. The digital outreach stuff has continued to grow. We're going to pour more into this community. We're doing that in the midst of this because we don't believe that this transition is the most important thing about Foothills. We believe that helping people find and follow Jesus is the most important thing. And the people of Foothills are, are the avenue God uses. This is just all we are is servants. We're here to serve, serve this community. Um, and so we look at this while we know it's significant, in the grand scheme of everything we're doing, we hope, like my prayer is that this doesn't take center stage, that this is uh, this is just a conversation that we have to have while we're still chasing what is center stage, which is helping more people find and follow Jesus. Yeah, perfect way to end that. That's, that's, that's couldn't have said it any better myself. That's so good. We don't, we don't want this to be in any way a distraction. We want it to be something that just kind of is almost in the background, but, you know, so... 
Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. We're certainly excited about the future. Hey guys, thank you for listening today. We want to remind you again, if you have any questions, go ahead and send them to questions at foothills.cc. Thanks again for hanging out with us. We'll see you guys soon.